You can support Retro Recollections on Patreon, just like these wonderful folks. Thank you for your support. Hi guys, welcome back to Retro Recollections. Now, Amigas can be a bit of a money sink, which is what I'm finding out, especially this day and age. And if you want in extra bits and pieces for it, like uh, accessories and peripherals, they can go for a pretty penny. Now, one solution, um, if you want in extra floppy drives, is to convert a standard PC three and a half inch floppy drive to work on Amigas. They don't work out of the box. There's slightly different uh, configurations to the actual hardware, but quite a few um, that are easily available can be modified quite easily uh, to work on Amigas. Recently, I watched a video by Mark Fix's stuff. Hi Mark, if you're watching, uh, where he uh, modified such a, a drive. This isn't the same model, but this is one that he uh, pointed me out to and also Gadget UK 164 has done a video on this I'll link a couple of those uh, videos into the description because I'm sure they'll do a much better job than me uh, doing the, the actual mod um, but I'm gonna have a go with this one this is a Samsung SFD 321B now this one has got a sub uh, um, code of MSCH which is not one that I've found uh, a guide for, but some people are saying it's got a very similar or actually maybe the same board as one of the other versions of this drive that uh, have got a mod tutorial for, like the LNEC1 for example, so I'm hoping uh, that I'll be able to mod this the same way and um, we'll soon find out. So without further ado, let's crack this open and see whether we can get it sorted. So let's start by removing the outer shell of the floppy drive. This particular model is actually very easy to open up. One screw on the top holds the top shell in place and four screws hold the bottom in place. Once these are removed, the shell just comes away, no prying open of tabs required. Now with access to the drive's board, we can identify the areas that need modifying. I am using a guide for the Samsung SFD 321B slash LCP3. Despite this drive actually being an SFD 321B slash MSCH, it has the same board configuration. We need to move a tiny resistor jumper from DC to RDY, change the drive from DS1 to DS0 by desoldering and resoldering the correct jumper, and finally we need to run a wire from pin 2 on the floppy connector to the DC pad in the first step. One last step that is not required on this particular revision, but may be present on yours, is that the four in-use slash NHDD jumpers are all disconnected. They already were on my floppy drive. The little jumper on DC is very delicate, so I used tweezers and gently heated the pads. It 
eventually it popped off. Try not to lose it and make sure you haven't accidentally bridged the connection with solder. Add a bit of extra solder to the RDY pads and place the tiny 0 ohm resistor on top and gently heat each pad in turn and it should settle nicely. Now disconnect the DS1 jumper link and bridge the DS0 connection. The last step for me, again make sure to check the 4 in use slash NHDD jumpers on your particular drive to see if they are already disconnected, is to run a wire from pin 2 on the floppy connector to the top DC pad we removed the resistor from earlier. I add a little fresh solder to both points and pre-tin the wire to make things easier. Once again it was time for the tweezers to make the job a little easier as well. And that's it! I like to do a few continuity checks with a multimeter to make sure I haven't accidentally shorted anything. Once I'm happy everything is in order, I take the opportunity to give the floppy reed heads a little clean with IPA and a cotton bud. Gently lift the mechanism to clean the top head, but be careful not to raise it too high or force it. Right, time to give it a test. I've attached the, the floppy to the Amiga, just on top of, resting on top of the GoTek. I'm gonna give it a wire it all back in, give it a test. Right, I'm gonna power on. Ooh. I'm getting act drive activity. You could hear it doing something. Let's try a disc again. Thanks Pillock for the discs. It's doing its clicky thing, so let's try workbench. Reading it.
Well, it's reading the disc, but it's got a write error. So uh, let's take that out and try a different disc. What's this one? Amiga test kit. We'll just reset. Yay! I don't know if you can see that, but it's working. It's reading the discs. It is reading. So what can we test on here? Floppy drive. Well, select VFO selected. Signal test. Read test. Right. DFO present. This is brilliant. Let's do a read test. Cannot read track 33. Okay. Right, let's try a game disc, see how that works. Pinball Dreams. I love Pinball Dreams. Right, let's reset again. Brilliant. Amazing. Well, I'm mega impressed with this. I got this, this floppy drive I picked up for £9.99 delivered and within with a five minute mod I've got a working Amiga compatible floppy. If you go out there and look for Amiga floppies they're about between £25, £30, £40 pounds, some of them especially the external ones so this is going to save me a lot of money in the future if I ever need to replace drives in the future. But I'm not sure how I'm going to set this up yet. I'm tempted to mount this internally. I'm trying to get source a, a replacement button because you can get apparently you can get a button that is compatible with this. And I might I might still do that. If not, I might mount it externally uh, and have it for backing up um, stuff onto the actual floppy. So I've still got my uh, other floppy, which was the original one that came in the, in the Amiga and it was having issues but I think it might just need a good grease, good greasing. Uh, I've got uh, some grease on the way um, and try and get this back up and running. But it's great to have that, you know, I mean for, for £10 delivered, floppy drive and it works, it works perfectly. Right, I hope that was useful. I will put some links into the tutorials for this as well as links to other videos that have um, done something similar in case you've got a different drive but and there's also a website I will link that lists there's quite a few drives that you can actually pick up and use to do this some are simpler to do than others I know the one Mark had 
he had to lift a pin on a on a chip and isolate that and everything like that, which um, I'm glad I haven't had to do. Mine was dead simple, you know. I had to move one little uh, resistor over. Uh, I had to um, connect a cable to to to, an, to a pin on the on the connector, and I had to change the drive select from one to zero, and that was it. And it took me about between five and ten minutes. So I can't ask for better than that. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, if so please give us a like and subscribe to the channel for more uh, for more good stuff and tell all your friends because i'm trying to build a build a community here uh, it's going well i'm almost done a year now on youtube so i'm and i think i'm doing quite well considering and i'm really enjoying interacting with everybody and i've made loads of friends so i'm really it's really made a big difference to my life and also um it's give it sparked new new interest in this hobby for me so thank you very much i'm going to go off and play some pinball dreams take care